In the alternate version of Exercise 10-10, we're presented with an installment note scenario. On January 1, 2016, Eagle is going to borrow $35,000 cash by signing a four-year 7% installment note. The note requires four equal total payments that are a combination of both accrued interest and principal paid at the end of each year, December 31st, from 2016 through 2019. We're asked to first calculate what is that total equal payment amount. To do that, we're going to take the initial balance of the loan, of the note, $35,000, divide it by one of the table values. Now your question may be, there's four tables. Which one am I supposed to use in order to get that value? We've got two present value tables, that's what PV stands for, and two future values tables, that's what FV stands for. Well, we can go ahead right away and mark off future value from the list. We're trying to relate these equal payments in today's dollar terms, not in future dollar terms. So that leaves us with either what we call the lump sum table, present value of a dollar, or our annuity table, present value of ordinary annuity, Lump sum is appropriate when we're paying that amount back in one single amount. So if we were paying the $35,000 back all at once at the end of four years, this is the appropriate table. On the other hand, we're paying that back in four equal payments at the end of each of the next four years. That's what an annuity is. So we're going to use the present value of an ordinary annuity table. Again, I'm going to note it's four years and a 7% interest rate. That's going to be important. So let me take a look at our present value of an ordinary annuity table. A lot of numbers here, so let's try to digest this. First, I'm going to look at how many periods I'm going to use, which is going to indicate what row I'm going to use. We're talking about years. In particular, this is over four years, so we're going to use the row that corresponds to four. Now what column do I use? We use the column that corresponds to the interest rate, which happens to be 7%. So at the intersection of 7% and four years, we have a factor of 3.3872. So if I navigate back to our table here, take $35,000 divided by 3.3872, I get an annual payment of $10,333. That's the amount we're going to pay at the end of each of the next four years. Now we've got a little bit harder task. We're asked to dissect this annual payment and figure out what's the amount of interest and what's the amount of principal paid at the end of each year and, and what's the outstanding balance of the note of each year. So let's take this one step at a time. Well, the easy answer is, it's four equal payments of $10,333, right? We, we settled that up here. So every single year at the end of the year on December 31st, we're going to credit cash for $10,333. The harder part about it is, what do we debit? That's going to be a combination of interest and principal. And we're going to have to work through some calculations in order to figure out what's the appropriate combination because it's going to change each year. So let's start to work through here. We'll start out at the beginning of the year. This is beginning of the year balance. $35,000 is still outstanding as of January 1st, 2016. So I'll notate $35,000. Let's figure out what interest was owed. Keep in mind, this first payment's not going to be made until December 31st, 2016, so that $35,000 is going to be outstanding from January 1st until December 31st, 2016. We've got to calculate one year of interest on that. So what's our debit to interest expense? $35,000 times the annual 7% interest rate equals a total interest expense of $2,450. Okay, so we'll notate that. That would be a debit. Keep in mind, in expenses, we debit them to increase them. Now let's ask the other question. What's the amount of principal or the amount we're decreasing or debiting notes payable down by? Keep in mind, each payment is a combination of some part of interest and some part of paying down principal or reducing our notes payable. 
So how do we figure out what portion that is? Take our total cash payment of $10,833, subtract the interest amount we just calculated of $2,450, and we get that the payment of principal or reduction or debit to notes payable is going to be $7,883. Magically, those two add up to be our credit to cash. Now let's also look at once we pay down a portion of that notes payable, what's the balance that's left over outstanding as the, of the end of December 31st, 2016? The initial amount of 35,000, subtract the principal payment of $7,883 in order to get the remaining outstanding balance at the end of 2016, going into beginning, 2017 is going to be $27,117. So if we continue to move forward, that's our beginning of the balance as of 2017. And I'm not going to show all these calculations since I did the first one. Multiply it times 7% because keep in mind, $27,117 is going to be outstanding from January 1st to December 31st until we make that payment. Multiply it times our 7% interest rate to get an interest expense of 1,898. If we subtract that from the total payment of cash of $10,333, it leaves us with a reduction of our notes payable of $8,435. If we take that and subtract it from our beginning balance, for 2017 of $27,117 minus the reduction of principal of $8,435, we get an ending balance now outstanding as of 2017 of $18,682. Again, I'm not going to go through the calculations each year, but I'm going to go ahead and show those so perhaps that you can prove those out on your own and work independently on your own to prove those out. And if we do look, I'll point out a couple things. If we add up our interest expense over the four years, it's going to be $6,332 over four years paid in interest expense. If we look at the total reduction of principal or payment of the notes payable, 7,883 plus 8,435 plus 9,025 plus 9,657 equals the total principal payment of 35,000. Um, I will note that sometimes you may find with your homework problems or your exam questions that the last year sometimes ends up being a little tricky. Um, sometimes because of the fact that we end up rounding in this situation to the nearest dollar compared to what we would um, perhaps do in the real world, sometimes you have to look at kind of plugging in your last principal payment to make sure it balances out to the total outstanding debt and then backing into your interest expense. Sometimes there, there's a little fudge factor of a dollar or so um, just because of the rounding factor, so I'll mention that. But make sure you add up to the total initial balance here. I also note our total cash payments are going to be $41,332. And a few additional things that I'll notate is if you noticed here that our total outstanding amount is going to decrease over time until we get to the end of the life at the end of the four years where we have a zero balance. That's what we intend in that situation. I'll also point out that our interest expense goes down over time. So it's a nice thing. Starts out really high at 2450 ends with a lower value of $676. And if you think about it, it's because of the fact that the amount of principal or outstanding debt that it's being calculated on is going down over time. We keep multiplying at times 7%, but by a lower amount. So that means interest expense go down. And keep in mind, our total cash payment is going to be the same because we were required to pay an equal amount of a total payment, 
since that stays the same and interest expense declines over time, that means every single payment years and years later ends up paying actually a greater amount of principal as we get over time. So increasing amount of principal is being paid as we get later in the life of that particular item.